We'll make a steering. So in this video, we're mounting that rack, building tie rods, building hardware, and explaining basic steering geometry so you don't ride like poop. Now let's start the show. All right, so first I gotta go inside and draw up the mounts and tabs, so come on, let's go do that. Here I'm just showing you how easy it is to program the plasma cutter. I held off for a long time on getting this, but it's like drawing and painting, it's simple. I wish I wouldn't have held off for so long. Here's most of our parts and pieces, and we're gonna start here. Okay, so this is it right here. A little ugly, but it's gonna work. Saved me about 35 bucks. So we're gonna go in and mount it now. <clears throat> Alright, check it out. She's in. You can see I've gusseted it. Whatever this thing is, is working well. We got some steering. So let's get into the next part. Now I've got three things to talk about. One is bump steer, two is Ackerman, and three is this right here. All right, I lied. So number one will be Ackerman or no Ackerman. So I'm going with a parallel setup, just what it sounds like. Both wheels turn the same amount both ways. So that will mean my joint is uh, mounted in line with these joints and then in line with the rear outside tire. Uh, and then you have Ackerman, which is what normal street cars use. Uh, it's a very safe setup. It's um, great for slow speed cornering. It's very stable, but the problem is you'll end up pushing in high speed corners. An Ackerman setup would look like this. So this joint, this joint is lined up with the center of the rear axles. And then you have positive Ackerman, which is here which is what race cars use, you know, for high speed turns, very good for high speed turning in. It will not push in the corners, but it's terrible for slow speed stuff. I mean, your turn radius is like twice what it should be. So that would be lined up somewhere behind me. Like I said, I'm going with parallel, so for the dirt and with a live axle, which is gonna be turning me half the time anyways, this will be perfect. Number two is gonna be bump steer, which also depends on this guy here. So if you can see, this heim joint is in line with the top and bottom joints here. And then on the front side with my parallel setup, it's going to be in line in the front too. What that'll do is give you an equal tie rod length to your A-arms. And that's what you want. So when it's all articulating, it's all going in the same circle, right? So that's what's key here is having uh, equal length tie rod to your upper and lower control arms. Now you could still have that if you had an Ackerman set up. You would just have to have this also a little longer, maybe a longer rack or a longer rod end here. But it doesn't have to be in line, it just has to be equal length. And then where you have this mounted up and down is going to matter too. If you have this mounted too low, like down here, that angle is way different from the angle of these two and your circles are going to be way off when you're articulating. So. I'm going to put this in line, right? Say this is two inches below the top ball joint here. This will be two inches below the top here. So it's all parallel. It's moving in the same uh, plane. So that'll keep bump steer down to a minimum, hopefully. And then three is going to be the length of this guy here. That's going to determine how fast or slow your steering is. So fast steering would be like real twitchy, short steering like a go-kart. Slow steering would be like driving a truck, you know, having to turn all the way over. So if this is longer, say out here, you're going to have real slow steering. 
If it's real, real short, it's going to be twitchy and way too fast. So you have to find a happy median in there. I'm like three inches from the center of my kingpin, so that should work, but we'll see because prototype. But getting those three things right will uh, save you a ton. So that looks pretty damn good in there. But like I was saying earlier about the length of these tabs, check this out. I got it wrong. So when this is all the way to full lock, it's not even all the way maxed out yet and my wheel is almost at 90 degrees. So I'm gonna have to come back and make this about an inch longer. All right, there it is. It's working now. Look at that angle. I got some drift status right there. I wanted to make it a little bit more angled because as you can see, I made two sets of holes so uh, I can go out one if it's too much angle, but this will work out. Man, I am just so excited. Look at that freaking angle, man. Ooh. Oh, there it goes. So, I need to weld this in still and cut it down just a hair, still a little too long. Then drill some holes so I could do some plug welds in there and uh, send it. All right, guys, I did say I would weld everything up, but I'm not going to. I wanna keep it all unwelded, just in case when I build this other side, it doesn't work out for some reason. It should work out. I'm building uh, all the suspension here, front and rear, in a video next week, so come back for that. But I'll go over real quick what's happened. I've uh, extended this tab out another inch and put a second hole just in case that angle is too much. And then you can see that my tie rod is pretty much parallel to the upper control arm. So bump steer shouldn't be an issue. And I will go through the travel right now. And that looks pretty good. Also, all together with the rack, all these ends. Oh, you haven't seen this yet. There's an end here, and then there's another, um, I don't know what they're called, another joint here. I can't mount anything. I can't mount the steering wheel yet because there's no dash bar to mount it to. But I think everything cost me about 200 bucks altogether. I, if that sounds like a lot, you need to spend it if you're building one of these. It's 700 pounds and 125 horsepower. And this is a suspension component. There is load traveling through these tie rods, so you wanna build it kinda of strong. So that's it here. I didn't have the other side to finish the steering build and I don't have a dash bar yet to uh, you know put in the steering wheel, but. I'm sure you know how that works. If you like the video, hit all the buttons and just keep coming back. Also, if you're wondering what spirit I got, it's Midget Pride.